All right, everybody, it looks like we're uh, three past the hour, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. Uh, thank you all for coming to our Unite Now session today, Test Smarter, Not Harder, Game Simulation, and Onipong 4. My name is Mike Carley, and I'm a Senior Product Marketing Manager here at Unity on the Game Simulation product. And I'm very lucky to be joined by my coworker, Christina, who can do uh, a, fa a fantastic intro. Hi, yes, I'm Christina. I'm a Senior Product Manager on the Game Simulation team here at Unity. Perfect. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into our session. We have a great agenda for you here today. We're going to start by going over the different challenges surrounding testing games today. We're then going to introduce you to Unity Game Simulation, what it is, what it does, why we think it's a pretty fantastic solution. We're then going to go over our case study of the day, going over how game simulation helped the Korean developer Sunday Taz with their hit game Anipong 4. And last but certainly not least, we'll give you kind of a future looking view of where we plan to take game simulation both today and into the future. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. We're going to start today with a challenge that I'm sure is familiar to all of you. And that's the fact that launching a quality game is hard. And by definition, quality here needs to be a very all encompassing term. It needs to mean your game works correctly and is bug free. It needs to mean your game looks great. It needs to mean your game is engaging and offers players a challenge that they believe they can overcome. Testing is a great solution to help with this before launch, but ultimately testing is costly, it's time consuming, and it's inefficient. And if you've ever had to test a game pre-launch and you know all the different bevy of tests that you need to run to ensure your game is quality, you quickly realize why this level of very um, ingrained and elongated testing can really do damage to your uh, to the, your ability to compress your development timelines. There are tests like game unit testing, which are very binary tests that we run on bits of game code. Things like if a bullet hits a player, does that player get injured? There are QA playthrough tests, which typically amount to monolithic spreadsheets that a human play, play tester needs to sit down and go line by line through executing the requested interactions, a very time consuming and tedious process. There are balance validation and optimization tests. These are tests that ensure your game is challenging and engaging. If you have a shooter game, you don't have a combination of gun variables that destroy all other guns or enemies in the game. If it's a racing game, you, don't, you wanna make sure that your car variables don't add up to a single car or collection of variables blowing all other players out of the water. So ensuring your game is balanced and challenging and engaging is a very important set of tests that we need to focus on. And with next generation consoles coming around the bend, Performance testing your game to make sure it works and behaves correctly across all different devices under all different loads and stresses of players is an extremely important set of tests. So testing is not a small portion of your game development timeline. And there are some great solutions on the market today, but they all have their limitations. There's not a one size fits all solution out there to model their game, whether it's the game economy or the different game parameters. Uh, to model their game and hopefully make some predictions about how those different combinations of variables will actually play out in the, in the actual game. And because you're relying on a human to hopefully encompass all the different combinations of variables in your game, these models can often be oversimplified. And because these models are oversimplified, we can call into question the predictive value they have at what these combinations of variables will actually net out to in the actual gameplay experience. Human play testing is a great option, especially when it comes to the more qualitative aspects of your game. Is this fun? Am I, am I being challenged? Will I come back and play again? However, human play testing is extremely costly and it's not scalable. If you want 10 simultaneous playthroughs, you need to pay 10 individual people to sit down in front of a device and play through a level 10 times. There are additionally some automated solutions on the market today but they're very limited in what they do and they're very niche. It's usually one very small testing use case that they address and they don't really have plans to expand the types of use cases that they do address. So there are some solutions on the market today to help automate and streamline some of the testing you have to go through. But as you can see, they all have their drawbacks. And that's why we built Unity Game Simulation. Unity Game Simulation provides an affordable way to automate and scale game balance and QA testing by empowering you to simulate millions of game playthroughs and interactions in the cloud. So very, that's a great, really you know, tight marketing statement, but let's look at what game simulation looks like in practice. How can Unity Game Simulation actually help you as a game developer or designer as you're trying to launch the most quality game possible? So Unity Game, game Simulation is designed to be a very easy, intuitive product to pick up and use. 
The first step is to go to our website and download the game simulation package and upload the build of your game. This will allow game simulation to place counters throughout your game, which are used to track the output metrics throughout each simulated playthrough. These counters can be increased, decreased, or reset at any point of the simulation. And the great part is you don't have to wait for the simulation to complete to actually view the results on these counters. You can check the results of these counters mid-simulation, either at a single moment in time or over a predefined interval, which is really powerful. You can then use our intuitive web dashboard to easily parameterize these simulations and of course, kick them off. And what you're doing when you're kicking off a simulation with game simulation, one of the most important capabilities you're leveraging is what we call grid search. Grid search is a capability built directly within game simulation that will automatically generate and test every conceivable combination of game parameters you have. So when we compare it to something like a human built spreadsheet model, where we're hoping the human considered every possible vari variable combination, with grid search, we're removing that hope. <laughs> we're basically saying we will absolutely locate, generate, test, and validate every conceivable parameter combination within the game. So you know we're leaving no stone left on turn when we're doing these simulated playthroughs. You can then run these simulations at cloud scale. You can scale testing, not only of course, by running them in the cloud at a much faster rate, but you can also run parallel simulations. So you can run you know, two, three, five, 10 simulations at once at the same time, which will not only generate results quicker than these traditional testing methods, but because you're running them at cloud scale and you're running them over hundreds or thousands of millions of playthroughs, you're gonna eliminate those outlier results and really get a, a, a really trustworthy set of quantifiable results from these, situa uh, from these simulations that are a lot more accurate than what can be generated by an oversimplified Excel spreadsheet or a human play tester. And these reliable quantitative results can be viewed and chopped up and executed in, in multiple different ways. You can view the results for an individual simulation or a playthrough. You can aggregate results over thousands of playthroughs. And you can even integrate game simulation with your existing analytics system to further extend the power of the data-driven data decision-making that you're trying to make as you tweak your game, test the tweaks, et cetera. And for those who really want to supercharge the amount of operational agility that game sim uses and, and lends to your organ organization, you can also leverage our public APIs to seamlessly slot game simulation into your existing build pipelines, CI pipelines, or with any other custom functionality you have built into your game development operational workflows. You can also use these public APIs to actually kick off simulations as well. So if, if you're really developer focused and uh, you want to kind of more uh, automate the kicking off of simulations or run it in a more headless manner, instead of using the web dashboard, you can certainly leverage our, our, our APIs to do that. So when we go back and look at the current suite of testing options on the market today, you can hopefully now see that game simulation does offer some pretty unique benefits when compared to these three existing solutions. As I've mentioned before, when compared to spreadsheet-based models, game simulation are gonna deliver much more accurate results, not only because we can guarantee that we're accounting for every variable combination possible, but we're also running these at cloud scale over thousands of playthroughs. So you're really sure that you're not looking and making decisions based on outlier data. And another more nuanced advantage is that with game simulation, you're running a simulation through your actual game code, your actual game. You're not trying to represent a proxy of your game with figures and equations on an Excel spreadsheet. So being able to actually simulate and test on your actual game is a massive advantage when it comes to comparing game simulation to spreadsheet-based modeling. When compared to human play testing, game simulation is far more affordable and scalable. We currently charge $1 per hour, $1 per simulation hour for game simulation, which is a lot more cost effective when compared to the hourly rates of human play testers. We can also, of course, run multiple parallel simulations at once and run thousands or millions of game playthroughs, which is a scale that absolutely can't be achieved with human play testing. Last but not least, when compared to the automated solutions on the market, we have some great market validation that game simulation can help with QA use cases and game balancing use cases. And we're only gonna be expanding the amount of use cases and, and, and ways to use game simulation from here. When compared to the other automated solutions on the market, we, they really can't compete as far as the reach and breadth of the things game simulation can do. And because game simulation is Unity native and we have our public APIs, we can really supercharge the amount of agility that you can do by allowing you to tweak your game, test those changes, 
enact those changes, test the next round of changes, et cetera, and make that that make that feedback loop extremely quick and tight. So you can really make agile changes to your game based on the results of your simulations, which is something you certainly can't do with a bolted on third-party integration. So as you can hopefully see, game simulation does have some really great distinct advantages over the current options on the market today to automate or compress testing timelines. And before we dive into our case study of the day, I wanted to call attention to two other great case studies that we've already written up and placed on our game simulation website. Furion's Death Carnival is a great case study, as well as Logica's Rogue Racers. Both of these customers used game simulation to balance and optimize and deliver the most quality game possible on launch. But the main takeaway from this slide is that Furion's Death Carnival is a top-down shooter. Logica's Rogue Racers is a mobile freemium racer, and as you're about to see, Anupung 4 is a match three game. Game simulation is not custom tailored for any specific game genre. Game simulation can help no matter the genre of game you're building. So we encourage you to try game simulation, even if you don't see the exact type of game that you're looking to build reflected in this talk track here today. So that's a high level overview of game simulation, what it is and what it does. And with that, I'm very happy to pass it over to Christina to dive into our case study of the day. Christina? Awesome. Thanks, Mike. So Sunny Taz uh, uh, is a leading mobile games developer in South Korea, and they created over 20 mobile games to date. Uh, one of their most popular games is called Anipang, as Mike mentioned, um, which is a popular puzzle game that's been downloaded over 35 times since its 2010 launch. So Anipang 4 is the third sequel to the original hit. And for this game, as is common for a lot of puzzle games, um, the Sunday Toss team needed to design countless new levels to satisfy player demand. On average, the team releases 20 to 30 new levels every two weeks. And making sure that the quality of this uh, amount of content uh, is good puts a strain on team resources. So they needed to find innovative ways to engage players, quickly play test, and check the results, and then make revisions for each new level before release. Sunny Taz needed to exponentially increase the number of tests they could run, so they could so they turned to Unity game simulation. Uh, and here, uh, Sunny Taz really wanted to answer two questions using game simulation. The first they called difficulty analysis, and the question that they're trying to answer is: Are the levels the right difficulty, or are they too hard or too easy? And the second they called error detection, and the question here is: Do the levels have errors, or are they playable? So to answer the first question of whether the levels are the right difficulty. Sunny Taz developed uh, an autoplay mechanism. And using this playthrough mechanism, they run tests on each level with a set of input parameters. Um, these include the given number of turns, the number of uh, certain block types, mission count, and many more. The output metric is the failure rate of each level. After the simulation completes, Sunny Taz determines whether the output metric is within a desirable range. And if not, they adjust the parameters, for example, by reducing the number of turns and rerun the simulation. And once the failure rate is right, the level is de deemed to be the right difficulty. Now the next question is whether levels have errors. Sunny Taz uh, flag simulations where the autoplay stops playing before using all of the given turns. And if this happens, Sunny Taz identifies the cause of the error, which may include uh, wrong mission count, wrong object placement, uh, or crashes. And then after fixing the cause of the error, Sunny Taz rerun simulations to again verify the change. Uh, game simulation has helped Sunny Taz increase the precision of their difficulty predictions and reduce the time it takes to detect errors. Sunny Taz can now run 600 play tests every two to three weeks when new levels are released. And this re represents a five to 10 times more tests per level than manual efforts did before, while saving hundreds of hours of developer and designer time. Now, all this testing is playing off, is paying off. Uh, Annie Pong 4 saw 2.5 million downloads two months after launch. And with 850,000 monthly active users, Sunny Taz faces more and more demand for new content and therefore more and more testing needs. Uh, Dongan Kim, who is a technical director at Sunny Taz, really values the flexibility that GameSim gives to his team on how to allocate their time. So game simulation can take the tedious parts out of testing so developers and designers can focus on content creation and the fun factor. Uh, by increasing exponentially the number of tests that they can run, game simulation helps ensure a great gameplay, exp gameplay experience. So where does game simulation go from here? Well, there's four main areas that we're tackling. 
One is bot creation. We want to help you manage and create automated playthrough mechanisms using existing tools. The second is metric optimization. So given all the data that game simulation can generate, we want to help you find the perfect combination of parameters for your desired metric output. In addition to game balancing, game simulation can also extend to QA needs. We want to ensure that your UI looks and behaves as intended. And for multiplayer games, we want to help you stress and load test. Now for all these tests, we want to help you run them seamlessly on a daily, weekly, or continuous basis. All right, with that, I'll hand it back over to Mike. Perfect. So as we wrap up the session, and we'll, of course, take any questions that might have popped up during the session, the one takeaway take we want you to leave with is that you can test better with simulated playthroughs by increasing the accuracy, efficiency, and scale of your testing efforts, especially across the use cases we support today in, in game balance and QA. If you're interested in any of the future-facing features that Christina just went over, please email us at the game simulation uh, email alias you see here. Um, and in fact, if you have any questions or concerns, you'd like a follow-up or a deeper dive on game simulation, please reach out to us. We're more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. More relevantly, if you want to jump in and give game simulation a try, please sign up at our, at our website that you can see on this website, unity.com backslash products backslash game slash simulation. We will give you 500, your first 500 hours uh, of simulation are completely free of charge to allow you to get in, with, get in, use the tool, play around, and see what difference game simulation can make with your, with your game development and uh, with your testing timelines. So that was our efficient and, uh, and hopefully impactful game simulation session. Uh, we'll pause now for any questions uh, that might have arose during the session um, or any questions you'd like to ask now. Excellent. So uh, feel free to use the Q&A pod to answer any questions that might have arose. Uh, and Christina and I will be happy to address those. Otherwise, thank you so much for your time and joining our session this morning. And we really appreciate your, uh, your willingness to learn some more about game simulation. All right. So Christina, this is probably a great question for you. Can we train uh, the ML agents by using game simulations? Uh, so we have a separate team, ML Agents, which is actually a very close partner team, um, and happy to uh, direct any um, inquiries into how to use ML Agents and how to use it uh, concurrently with game simulation to, their, uh, to that team. Uh, essentially, what will happen is you can create a bot using um, whatever method you want, including ML Agents, and all you need to do is bring your own bot uh, to the simulation to, make it, to have it run the simulation for you. Perfect. Uh, second follow-up question from Dan, would this work in a non-game environment? And the answer is yes. And we actually have an entirely different team uh, and entirely different product for non-gaming applications. That product is called Unity Simulation. Uh, and we have applications uh, in um, different kind of non-gaming verticals. Um, so Dan, if you are interested in that, I'm going to go ahead and put my email in the uh, chat pod here. It's going to be mike.carly at unity3d.com. Uh, if you would like to learn more about the industrial applications or the non-gaming applications of the simulation technology, please shoot me an email and I'd be more than happy to connect you with the industrial side of things. Uh, the other question I see from Dan is, uh, it seems like the games have specific goals. So what if you wanted to, uh, if you have a game that is more open world? Um, so as long as you have uh, a way to quantify the metrics and the parameters. Um, it doesn't really matter what the type of game is or if it's open world versus um, deterministic or anything like that. Um, yeah, what's most important is just that you're able to have uh, integer or float values. Excellent. Well, again, you have that uh, game simulation at Unity 3D alias that I would encourage you all to reach out to with any follow-up. You can also reach out directly to me via my email that I put in the chat. More than happy to, uh, to continue discussions and answer questions in a more in-depth way. Um, but again, we really appreciate everybody who was able to attend today and uh, reach out with any other questions or concerns. And hopefully uh, and, you know, when we meet up this time next year, a game simulation has done some really cool and transformational things to your testing timelines. Wonderful. Well, thanks again, everybody, for your time and have a great day.